Hello everyone, this is Chase Crispin. Today we're going to be looking at advanced word processor tasks on the Braille Plus 18, including moving through a document, using the cut, copy, and paste functions, and saving your document to a specific folder on your Braille Plus 18. My Braille Plus 18 is currently turned on, and I'm on the home screen focused on the item for the word processor. So to launch the word processor, I'm simply going to press the select key. Word processor, document blank. And I'm placed in a blank document since I have previously closed all of my open documents. Rather than creating a new document in this tutorial, we're going to open an existing document. To show you that the Braille Plus can handle large and lengthy documents, I'm going to open a about 35 page research paper that I have saved on the device which included some graphics inserted to the document and is a fairly large file. And we will be doing some basic editing within this research paper document. So to open an existing file, I need to press Alt, which is the key to the right of the spacebar, with O, dots 1, 3, and 5. I'm pressing Alt O. File Manager, Camera Folder April 29, 2013, 1 of 9. Camera folder April 29, 2013, 1 of 9. I'm placed into a list of all of the files and folders contained on the internal memory of the Braille Plus 18s. If you wanted to choose a document that's on an SD card you've inserted into your Braille Plus, or a document on a USB drive, you could up arrow and then right arrow to either SD card or USB memory. But the document I wish to open is located in a Documents folder on the internal memory of the Braille Plus 18. So I'm just going to down arrow through this list of folders until I reach Documents. Some folder. Documents folder July 12th, 2000. And I've stopped the speech. I'm going to now press Select to enter the Documents folder. Research underscore paper dot docs 29 kilobytes January 08 TH 2000. And it always tells you the date that the file was last modified. I'm going to press the select key to open the file that is currently selected, which is the research paper itself. I'm going to press select here. Loading file. Word processor. Docu and the research paper file has been opened, and it is now showing on screen, and it loaded this whole 35-page file in just a couple of seconds. We can now begin moving throughout this file and doing some editing. A lot of the things we're going to be working with in this tutorial are found in the context menu of the word processor. The context menu will vary depending on what you are currently doing, if text is selected, etc. So the context menu will actually change depending on what you're working with. To enter the context menu, we can hold down the select key, which is in the middle of the arrows. Movement. And the first option is movement. The braille display says one of five. So there's four other options here. But first of all, let's go into this movement menu. This is a submenu. So we can press select and enter the movement menu. Movement alert. Beginning. Beginning. One of four. Beginning. One of four. If you press select on this first option, you would be taken no matter where you were in the document to the beginning of the document. You can also do this from anywhere in a document with dots 1, 2, 3 with the spacebar or L chord. If I down arrow, end, 2 of 4. This option will move us to the end of the document. This can also be done with dots 4, 5, and 6 with the spacebar. If we down arrow again, page up, 3 of 4. Page up or previous page can be accomplished within the document with Q chord, dots 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 with the spacebar. And finally, our last option, if I down arrow again, page down, 4 of 4, is page down or next page, which can be done with ER chord, or dots 1, 2, 4, 5, 6 with the spacebar. So you really don't need to enter this menu if you don't wish to. You can do everything with the corded commands I just mentioned, but if you have trouble remembering those commands, you will want to perform those functions via the movement menu. To close the movement menu for now, I'm going to press the back key. Word processor. Document blank. Computer braille required. And I'm returning document to my document. Blank. I'm going to return to the context menu again by holding down the select key in the middle of the arrows. 
and a text alert. The first option is movement, which is where we're currently focused. We've already looked at this, so I'm going to down arrow. Set mark, two of five. We could set a mark, which indicates the beginning of a place where we're going to edit, and we will be doing this in just a minute, so I'm going to describe this function a bit more when we actually go use it. I'm going to down arrow again. Select word, three of five. We could choose this option to select the word that we're currently focused on, and it would then select that word only for you to copy or cut to another place in the document. If I down arrow again, select all, four of five. This would select all of the text within our document so that we can move the whole document to, for example, an email message. We could paste it into an email message. We could paste it into another document, etc. So this would select all of the text written in this document. If I down arrow again, input method, five of five. This is a setting that you really don't have to mess with, so we're not going to worry about input method at all within this demonstration. I'm going to press the back key to close the context menu. Word processor, document blank. And now I'm actually going to take a page of this research paper and copy it and paste it into a new document. And we will use the page down command several times to move down through the document to get to a place just a few pages in and then we'll copy that page. You might want to realize before you begin using page up and page down that they don't always move by page. The Braille Plus 18 has a fixed screen length or amount of lines that will be moved by with page up and page down, so this might not always be the same as the page that your computer thinks is an entire page. So if you're moving by half a page or three quarters of a page, that's just going by how many lines the Braille Plus thinks are on a page. Some documents do have actual page markers built in, and if those are built in, you will move by page. So I'm just going to use ER cord to move to the next page. I'm going to do this a few times. Some of this information is regulated and protected. And you heard it read the information as I got to it, if we down arrow. The per in most cases, we're still fairly early in the document, so I'm going to do page down again. Now, I haven't moved very far down into the document, but we are at a point that's a little further along, so I'm just going to move a big chunk of the paper starting at this point, since I've gone a page down a couple of times. You will want to be a bit more precise about what text you move, but for this demonstration I'm just going to grab pretty much a random chunk of text and work with it. So my cursor I can feel is at the beginning of a line, and I'm going to set a mark at this location so that I can begin copying text. I'm going to enter the context menu by holding the select key, down arrow to set mark. Set mark, two of six. Press select. Word processor, document blank, computer braille required. And document we have, the act also. We have set a mark at that location. I'm going to down arrow just a few times here so we can move a few lines. And I've down arrowed about 10 times. I'm going to find the end of a sentence by using my right braille scrolling button until I fill a period. I found a period. I'm going to put my cursor at the end of the period. I'm going to find the cursor routing button that's above the space, which is the cell to the right of the period. Press it. The cursor has moved there. And now if I re-enter the context menu, we have some more options. We have, if I down arrow past movement, reset mark, two of seven, we could reset a mark, which would move the mark we set to our current location and it would get rid of the mark we set earlier. If I down arrow, cut, three of seven. Cut would take all of the text between the mark that we set in our and our current location, take it out of the document so we could paste it in somewhere else. If I down arrow again, copy, four of seven. This would simply allow us to copy the text, leaving the original text within the research paper that's open, and then put a copy of that text in another document or application. If I down arrow again, select word, 507. We're back to the options we had earlier with select word. I'm going to up arrow back to copy. Copy. Four press of select. Seven. Word processor. Document online private. And I just stopped it from speaking. We've now copied everything between the mark we set and the place where I put my cursor onto a virtual clipboard that we can paste into a new document. So instead of holding down one button repeatedly to select several lines, which you might be familiar with doing on other devices like the PC, you are able to navigate freely throughout the document and everything between the 
mark and your current cursor position, whether it's above or below the mark, will be copied or cut depending on what you choose. You could paste this text into email, even the web browser if you chose to, but I'm just going to paste this text into a new document. I'm going to open a new document. You could do this from the file menu, but I'm going to just simply press Alt plus dots one, three, four, five, Alt plus N for a new document. Document blank. We're in a new blank document. You heard it say document blank. I'm going to re-enter the context menu by holding select so I can find the paste function. I'm going to down movement. arrow past movement. Reset mark. Paste. Three of four. To a new option that's here, which is paste. I'll press select. Word processor. Document Online Privacy Protection Act, COPA, was created in... Oh. And I have stopped it from reading, but we now have the text we have pasted inserted into this new document. I'm now going to save this file in a documents folder, the same folder that we opened the document from earlier. So I'm going to press the menu key to open the menu. Menu. File. One of five. We have five options, but right now we're only going to take a look at the file menu. I press select to open it. File alert. New. New. One of five. We have new, which is the first option. We just did this using Alt N. If I down arrow. Open. Open. Two of five. We also used open with Alt O earlier. Save. Three of five. We've already done save in our last tutorial with Alt S. We're going to do this again in just a second. Save as. Four of five. Save as you would use if you wanted to save a document that's currently saved already in a different location or with a new name. So if I wanted to save the research paper with a more descriptive title than just research paper, which is what it's called, or if I wanted to save it in a different folder, I could have chosen save as. I haven't saved this document yet, so we're just going to do the regular save since it hasn't yet been saved. Close. Five of five. The final option is close, and that will just close the document and return you to the previously accessed document, which in this case would be the actual research paper. If this was the only document open, this would just close and return us to the home screen. And if you hadn't saved a document, you would be asked if you would like to save it so that you wouldn't lose it accidentally. If I up arrow, save, I save, open, new, to save, save, three of five, and press select. File manager, edit blank computer braille required. This works much like it did before when we saved. I'm just going to put my cursor at the end of the Untitled file name, seven. and I'm going to backspace seven. that title out of there. And I'm now going to type a new file name. I'm going to type excerpt. E -X -C -E -R -T. And this is an excerpt of the paper, so I'm just going to let it have the file name of excerpt. I'm going to Text down arrow. File spinner. We have the spinner control for selecting a file type once again. Text file is the default option, and this is a very universal format, pretty much any type of word processing application can open a text file. So I'm just going to leave this document as a text file, but I'm going to down arrow, which we didn't do last time, and I'm going to find a folder where I would like to put this document. SD card 24.7 gigabytes free. SD card is what it calls the Braille Plus's internal memory, so this is where I want to save it. If you had an external SD card, you could right arrow or USB media, right arrow twice, and then down arrow to see a list of folders on those drives if you had one inserted. I'm going to down arrow, and we are placed in a empty folder. It, the Braille Plus 18 remembers where you've opened things. We opened this file in the documents folder when we opened the research paper. So the documents folder was accessed since we've opened the word processor. Therefore, it assumes that that's where we want to save the file. But if you didn't want to save here, you could press back, Camera folder April tw And you're placed in a list of all of the folders. So we've gotten out of the folder where it thought we wanted to save it, where we were earlier, and now we're back into the list of all of the folders. So I'm going to down arrow to documents. Something. Documents folder press select empty. And it says the folder's empty because there's nothing that we can do. There aren't any subfolders to save in within documents. So documents is empty of other folders, so we can only save in documents, nothing further down. So I am in the documents folder, which is where I want to be. To save the file, we need to up arrow back to file name. SD text file spinner. File name at a text or computer braille required. And I can press select to save this file in the documents folder. Word processor. Document online privacy. And the excerpt of the paper has been saved.